So we have my boy Courtney Rhodes, who came in 15th place at the Super All Star 2 Hellstorm Major Tournament. Uh, so he did go. Oh, I just passed him up right now. I was looking at him. He did go four and two. So let me take you back to that before we look at his list. He did go four and two, number 15. I want to take a look at him because he was running the nice green tide you get. Uh, so I know a lot of guys are down on it. I was one of those people who's a little bit down on it. You know, it really did get no nu nuked, but it does have its matchups that they can do well. It just comes down to does the army uh, have the tools to beat you and sometimes the mission as well. Um, so we have war boss, a war boss with ruckus war caller. We have another war boss and then a weird boy quite light on the characters. And I'm quite surprised that there aren't a bunch of uh, pain boys. I mean, how uncommon is that? Usually whenever you see a green tide list, you're almost always seeing pain boys on them. I'm, I'm quite high on the pain boys as well when I bring my green tide list. So look at a green tide list and be like, no, no, we're not bringing any pain boys. Ooh, that's that's a bit hot. That's a bit hot. That's a bit uh, unique. That's a true take right there when someone comes at the uniquely. Though I'm not highly, like, fully against it. it it's quite expensive, guys. A pain boy is 80 points for a three wound model. Talk about any other 80 point three wound model. I mean, that's kind of silly. He, he is quite pricey so i get why um he had decided not to bring him right so um then we have the weird boy weird boy is pretty nice if you're trying to score secondary stage up position units and bricks so we do have just one simple 10 man unit of beast naga boys no character he just said i'm just bringing that uh but that's because he does have a kill rig so he does want to put something in there i don't blame him for not doing it for doing that that's actually a great idea um three force excuse me four units of 20 boys so he wasn't completely scared of you know running into uh uh call the horde excuse me i don't know i'm having a brain fart the call the horde was actually going to be a huge factor you know a lot of the times people still don't want to pick fix even if it's right in their face so i understand people being cautious of it it can happen on certain missions if it's purged the foe and you're already getting primary for trying to outkill you don't be surprised if they try to get it at that point yeah if you look he did pull back on assassinate so he could lean more into call the horde because you're not going to have two innate kill secondaries that you can pick for fix therefore he was defending himself from that kind of farm factor of points which is what you have to do if you're going to try to counter uh these nerfs that happen to your detachment right two trucks a battle wagon yeah two five man units of flash kits a simple basic grot unit one kill rig rattle right, you know we've talked about that snaggle boy unit that goes in it two five man units of power claws and then a storm boy unit so of course we can see with that truck right away two what we like to call swat teams right you take a truck you take two individual units of orcs that can function independently and you put them inside those units uh surprisingly enough you could argue that he would consider in some matchups putting a war boss into these five-man units and not even having these 20-man units of boys have a war boss uh if he's just using them for fodder just to get chewed up not really punch with them and then run around the field with his kind of punching units and try to delete the things that he can there's a chance that he really did do that too and didn't care to put the orc war boss in that unit and if he did it could be on the ruckus war caller unit simply that it's a 20-man unit uh the flexibility here comes down to the player themselves which is something i really like to see so ruckus war caller would allow you to still take advantage of the boys for their 20-man unit so that's probably where they would go but the two other war boss units could argue that they go into those knobs in the unit. you know what i'm saying uh so yeah and only one storm boy unit only one storm boy unit trucks really gonna have to do their work of course the flash gets are just an excellent swat team addition today's sponsor baron of dice so baron of dice has great dice they have actually enabled us to give these dice out for our paint competitions uh so i greatly advise that you go out there we have a link in the description for five percent discount that's of course because nobody likes taxes shout out to baron of dice because they are actually customizing orc dice just for us that you guys will be able to get a hold of and they look exceptional so shout out to baron of dice really appreciate you guys and i really do suggest you get them i love the actual texture these dice have beautiful 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 so let's look at what a green tide list does with some transports because that's pretty much what it is right you're bringing green tide units you're bringing swat teams you're bringing battle wagons uh so keep that in mind when you're going into these matchups and what we talked about with some of those factions versus factions uh that are difficult for orcs oh i just showed his list again wow hiccups boys hiccups are trying to fight me the chaos is trying to get to me all right starting off hot with chaos knights we ain't nothing but a war dog 
Yogi is what their list is called. Uh, we have War Dog Sock, followed by one, two, three, four, five brigands, and then six carnivores, and two units of Nurgling Slop Stock by a Sloppity Bio Piper. Um, interestingly enough, it really does come down to sometimes how this Nurgling unit was used. If they were smart enough to put them near uh, their carnivores, their brigands, stuff like that, to make the orcs ineffective at literally punching and killing them, there's a chance those 20 man units might not kill. But the fact that you have an access to a strat to reroll wounds means just by pure attrition, pure volume of punches as an orc player, uh, especially on the wall, you can shoot through some of these units. They don't really kill you that well when you have your seat, your your, your invul up, your five your five up invul non. Uh, so they can definitely focus you down if you're right sitting right in front of the war dogs and carnivore units with your 20 man units of boys actually they can wear you down uh but the difference is you can get the initiative and then them as long as you're you know on this matchup i would actually consider using storm boys for screening not even really putting them in deep strike because they might not score for you um in some matchups you can actually put them in the way so they can't get the initiative on your 20 man units if that's up to you as the orc player you look at the terrain uh if it's worth it if you think you can drop somewhere what the deployment is but these are the factors that you would go into that you got to slow these war dogs chew them through attrition score out on primary and actually be able to win that uh, it is a kind of thought process check so the fact that he came up on that with an 84 point win is pretty nice uh it's not an easy win because they have a bunch of oc yet this is where i was saying those swat teams can come into play where a flash get plus knob unit those guys themselves can tear down war dogs carnivore stuff like that uh the stalker pretty sick to see that love Love it when you see just boys in volume. You can really kind of survive that. You just have to stage up well, not let them put all of their units well, right? Because if they just so focus all those brigands um, and small alarms fire from the from the carnivores into a 20-man blend unit that doesn't have a pain bully, yeah, of course, that's getting picked up quite reliably. Yet, if you're in the tr in terrain, you're staged up, they only pick up a couple shots from you, you regen a couple guys for a CP, and then you move up on them, that's where you get the advantage. You reroll so you, you re -roll wounds with that unit. You're touching two different war dogs. You have the knob here. Here, maybe in this case you put a war boss in there the war boss here they reroll their wounds uh it can just start un unfolding for them and i've had you know there's a chance i've literally had it in games where uh war dog was or you know uh war dog was already hurt and a five-man unit flash gets was able to finish it off with lethals and sustain so swat teams are pretty potent i promise you i promise you then we look at his second matchup we went into death guard i'll tell you single-handedly this can be a tough matchup as an orc player uh when you're running green time so the transfers would help in this case though because remember that he has a, a battle wagon too which would survive help him in that chaos as well matchup um he has a biologist putrefier one two of those two foul blight spawns a lord of contagion and typhus so we're looking for the fight first we're looking for the crit fives right here in the two 10-man units of plague marine so we're getting these killy dudes two killy bricks these are problematic for your uh boys units as they have nasty flamers nasty lethal potential combined arms factor safe inside of a trance we have two rhinos uh a death guard chaos spawn a cultist unit another cultist unit of course really just to sit in the backfield and screen a lot of units deep strike so they're really just trying to protect that um you do have that's where weird boy comes into play guys that you're like i'm gonna run down these cultists you have a deshrod terminator unit another three-man unit a deshrod terminator unit three with blow drones a pox walker two nerglings units and two carnivores Ooh, so how these nerglings like i said before huge huge fit play factor on the death card player he might just you know take things too literal and say i'm gonna make one of your armor save that makes no sense here so of course he's gonna say minus one of your ballistic skill weapon skill uh but where he's putting these nerf to stack that aura of minus one to hit makes a huge difference if they're too exposed the flash gets can get off the battle wagon might actually help you in that case to shoot a little bit right uh deleting these nerglings as soon as possible is definitely a factor in this matchup uh, or you might just start bouncing of course the blow drones really help them cover the distance to get their contagion down the field your war bossings can shoot through that so you, you know it's not like it's always going to hold you up but it can definitely hold you up if you just roll unlikely so the battle wagon would definitely be a factor here for you to be able to stage up in the mid table and actually get the initiative on the rhinos trying to trap them and not kill them so their units cannot get out is the biggest factor here as a normal player uh, if he was able to pull this off i can see how that totally swings the game i don't personally know i'm just telling you how this comes into play you do have to worry about uh typhus he does mortal wounds he, he's uh you have a lord of contagion to help his shooting potential here too and other stuff but for the most part the combined arms of the plague brains is the biggest deal and uh once you kill them he's kind of run out of a lot of teeth he has like three he has terminators but they don't have oc they're not really going to kill the boys fast enough if the involves are rolling about average um so you can just run out mark a bunch of different objectives uh counter attack with your SWAT teams really get into play get stuck in where you need them with the five man units punch away maybe terminators it wouldn't be a reliable but on the wall if you're staged up already you could do it 
I do like that you have shooting here. The battle wagons allow you to not get uh, indirect fired. No, because actually he doesn't have, I don't even know why I said that. He doesn't have the, the drunk tanks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so used to the, being on the list. He does have the carnivores, though. I always say carnivores are slept on as like a little shitty, I'm sorry, crappy skirmish unit. Excuse me, it's a uh, crappy skirmish unit. Um, so this was actually a potent, potent list. And I am quite impressed that he ended up getting a 98 point win. So I don't know what was going on with that death card player. Very surprised the matchup went so one sided um, there. But hey, it can happen. Like skills matter. Skills matter. It really doesn't matter what the stats necessarily say. It's not like you're going to automatically lose. Um, going into his next matchup, he went to Dakari. So that's why I always show faction versus faction. And then I show you these list guys. The reason why I I want to always show you kind of like the big picture of the stats of faction versus faction. And then I start showing you the actual context of someone's win paths is to not only show the, you know, strength of schedule they had to show the value of their list, but also show possibly that there was a skill curve, uh, show that not all the time generalities are absolute. So even though I show them to you, it doesn't mean you should do doom and gloom. Uh, it's oh, good for everybody to get full context, especially if you're a newer player and you're looking into this and you get intimidated. No, no, that's why I'm showing you exceptions exist. And these are some of the exceptions. And that's a good thing for us. Um, and I always want to talk about that. Um, and then we have Drakari. So with Drakari, we have the Archon. Uh, so two Archons. And just we said with Death Guard, it can be a very good game. With my green side list, very good games as well. Very, very close, like one point game. It comes down to some dice rolls. It comes down to what you do with your, of course, like I said, transfer would make a huge difference. I don't even have a wagon. I can see how a wagon makes a huge difference. Uh, tagging units, taking playing marine units, holding them in place, holding the drones in place, still staying on transports, blocking stuff off objectives. Uh, Death Guard isn't great at killing transports. That's only like the carnivore can like punch the battle wagon, but then you can kind of get out, and that's probably where your knobs or just 20 man unit boys can just pipe, spill out and start tagging stuff. A uh, very high skill game that was that Death Guard game which i love to see because really can show that my boy was doing great with this list high skill level coming from my boy here courtney i think his name was courtney here just making sure well, don't be lying out here uh so in his third game he has dracotti with sky splinter assault force two archons then he has a beast master beast master and other mat like detachments let's say you're playing dread mob you're playing war horde and you don't want to get stuck in your deployment zone and just trapped there by standing there with uh with your truck getting in the way or your big killer guns unit or whatever uh this beast master unit can run up and move block you yet against a bunch of boys you're just giving elite prep like leapfrog units that they could run and charge to. So if the Jakari player gave this unit up right away because they scout and they move 12, that was super, super problematic. He shouldn't have done that, but we'll see. He has Lilith Tech Brash, a Cabalite Warrior, another Cabalite Warrior, two Witches Squads, two Raiders, four Venoms. Right, it was one, four, right? One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, Incubus, a max unit, followed by two five-man units of Incubus. They act kind of like the knobs that we have, right? Uh, Mandrake's full infiltration. So he has two infiltrating Mandrake units. Again, how they play them, if they're not used to playing orcs you can run up and swing without you know you can re-roll you can get additional charges um you can end up making distances that really throw armies off when you get those charges off sometimes if people are just positioning wrong it's a huge factor there too you got to consider that in the matchups uh and if orcs went first we have one two three units of scourges luckily the only real transport uh, sorry uh targets they have are two trucks and a wagon you can be quite safe. You can get quite safe. Uh, you will have to hope to make some saves, of course, on your wagon as well sometimes because it is quite big with the roller and such, which he was using. Um, but, uh, you know, I love to see it. In this matchup, it it does matter but who of you of was he able to leapfrog here and how, um, how much initiative did the Dark Eldar player get? Uh, knowing that the orc can kind of rock walk start walking right up to him and say i dare you let's go is huge now that the orc doesn't have to solely rely on the five up invul on the wall meaning he's just saying well we i'm staging up and when i call the wall i'm getting you the jacaria player kind of has to go uh, uh i'm gonna come I'm, I'm coming after you and they, they jump at you and they try to punch you and they fail to kill your whole unit uh you make it too many five up you spike too luckily and then you clean them up walk forward some more consolidate onto objectives have to it, it, it it's a bullying factor and also, like I said, they have a lot of scouting and infiltrating. I'm I'm worried that that Dracaria player, not worried, I mean, that's good for us. I'm thinking the Dracaria player allowed him to kind of leapfrog into him. 
uh, from that. So in this fourth matchup, I don't know, but let me know if you if you're out here and like it. I'd like to know, uh, Courtney. So then he had his fourth matchup, Adeptus Sororitas. So my boy's hitting the hard, hard strength to schedule right off the bat. He has Ringers of Flame. There's a Canonist, another Canonist, Dialogus, Palatine, and the Triumph of Saint Catherine. Is uh, is every list just bringing the Triumph? Is what I think, right? It's like every list is bringing the Triumph of Saint Catherine. We have a Battle Sister Squad followed by three Emulators, three Castigators. <laughs> I'm gonna show you the, the data sheets real quick. You get uh, Dominion squad three dominion squads love that you can break them up and combat squad them to effective units and then trash units uh because you could just split that unit into two five man units a lot of having a lot of units is super annoying also as orcs because we don't like trading as much flash hits are our best trades uh, and then we have seraphim seraphim and then a 10 man unit of seraphim for that deep strike killing carnage at least on one of those units in the bringer of flame uh so let's take a look at their data sheets real quick just because people might not be familiar sisters are a hard army to collect they're a little expensive you might not see them a little niche but competitively they're all over the place so you'll have emulators uh actually i should have made sure i pulled up they have armored heavy bolter that's what i thought okay very simple so i have a bunch of data sheets up here you get so we have uh in your shooting phase essentially you shoot an enemy whatever it was, when it was hit by this unit they don't get the benefit of cover and then you look over at a castigator and you can actually then stack that with you additional ap so not only that so you're getting the miracle dies for kind of some uh automatic outcomes that you would want not would want to happen with high damage and such they can disembark you they can kill you highly highly potent for covering the distance volume of damage uh stuff like that really good combined arms army when you meet them in the table yet if you're the orc player and this unit doesn't actually have the combat output you don't see the wretch uh not the retributors um the little crazy girls that are fighting chat tell me what that is i forgot that one you need to call off the top of my head um they don't have those volume of punches and that matchup against orcs that sucks even those pentangents that sucks he doesn't really have that i can see that being a huge factor in this matchup because seeing it all the time on war games live on streams and whenever i've you know seen uh these sister players when they don't have those dedicated you know like a morgan vol they don't have that sister unit with that has those people that feel no pain to get punched i forgot high volume not repentia but a different unit those are the chainsword girls um the other ones the ones that are like little pain freaks um Either way, they uh, when you don't have that, you end up getting kind of bullied by orcs. And I can see that's definitely how this matchup went because he had a good score on them too with 81. Now, what happened in his two last games where he ended up losing, where he still scored well? So let's take a look at those because we want some context here, right? Because surprisingly enough, yes, he lost to Gene Steelers. Uh, no shame in that because if, when you run into Gene Steelers, you know, it's happened to me where I was like, oh gosh, what's happening here? Luckily, uh, things went my way, but that that's you know that doesn't mean I wasn't on my toes. And this guy was playing playing for real because remember he's already gone four and zero at this point. This is a legit Gene Steel player because that means he was four and zero at this point. Uh, so he has a Kellamorph. He has three of them actually. Those Kellamorphs and little little lone ops. When you get within range of them, I think it's about twelve inches. They get to shoot as if it's the shooting phase with their six shots. A shrink six minus two one and a damage. Uh, so they're picking off your boys when they're moving around the field pretty reliably. You have a reluctant saboteur. I believe a mortal wound potential from that person. We have uh, two units of the hybrids with auto pistols followed by two three units with the hand flamers oh four four i lied six units with the hand flamers six of the five units the hand flamers of course you can see how that can start getting affected into boys and yes it was arco flagellants thank you jim jones that's my boy uh we got neo neo fight hybrids followed by two goliath trucks and three achilles ridge runners i'll show you those list, those units data sheets real quick um for their data sheet ability uh, anytime a unit is within combat of them and falls back they'll take a desperate escape test and they subtract one for those battle shock tests that they do take this unit was taking the incinerator uh clearance so it's a it's a flamer string six minus one 2d6 flamers quite often at the higher end of the meta between land raiders and transports that bring them you got vault predators you got so many different things uh so you do have to be aware of that followed by the achilles ridge runner that you have over here which after it shoots you then other genius units units give you ap uh not huge factor into like the boys but remember there are battle wagons here that you're slowly trying to chew down so you get access to the squishy boys in the middle because typically that battle wagon wants to walk up stage you shoot at the wagon you don't really kill it the boys get out and then they're in your face uh if they can pull that very simple strategy off it's a huge factor if they can't then that that's that puts them on their back foot right off to get uh so then we have uh two Adelan jackals like i said and then three goliath rock riders which i just showed you um so these guys do have the volume do have a dumb on a unit 
uh, and I would like to see the mission. Of course, these units can come back to life once you kill them, and the boys don't necessarily do that. So having units that you can focus fire down can matter greatly. Uh, so I'd like to hear more about that happen because he scored pretty well with a 79 point win. Uh, I mean, it's lost right there. But then he went to his next, next game and he ended up losing that one too with another quite respectable score of 77. He went to another Sisters of Battle uh, Battle unit. So another uh, Bringers of Flame unit. They have Canada's with Jump Pack, Morgan Vall. See the difference in this unit. Uh, a Palatine with Righteous Rage, another fighting unit. Uh, St. Celestine, another fighting unit. And then Trap 5, Triumph of St. Catherine. Followed by three emulators, as we spoke about the emulators uh, giving you the ignore benefit of cover, which is beneficial against the wagon, against the truck. Uh, if the boys are getting like storm bolter shots, the boys can stand in cover and take, you know, four up saves. Sometimes this takes that option away, which does matter, does matter. Um, then we have two castigators for the AP offset that might have reduced AP by one that the battle wagon has that normally makes it so crazy. So normally the battle wagon's like, all right, I am ignoring P minus one and I get cover. In this case, none of those exist. So now you're just taking straight AP to the face. Very, really more reliable to kill you. And this guy actually has the combined arms factor with sisters with fighting. Uh, he has the two Dominion squad. Then we have the Paragon War Suits, followed by just one brick of that Killy Hand Flavor squad. And then a Sister Novicia squad. He probably just had 100 points left. One of some units, four of some OC screening, do all the types of things alongside these double Dominion squads for action units. Uh, this is more potent. This is more what you see with the Sisters of Battle with combined arms. It doesn't have the Cascaders, still surprising. Still quite a respectable unit. Bringers of Flames are just like, we will meet you and bring the actual volume you know, re-rolls, damage, reliable outcomes. All in all, great job by Courtney Rhodes. We'll look over his green tide list one more time because I do appreciate that he didn't just stick with all characters and all boys. He found some kind of balance here. So he went three war bosses, one with Ruckus Warcaller to stick with 120 man units of boys. We have a weird boy. Hypothetically, you can put those with boys as well um, because they can jump around the battlefield to score, get in the way, kind of put pressure alongside the wagon. Then they have one unit of Beast Nagas for that kill rig that's on the list. Of course, that kill rig also takes all these boys to another strength threshold and possible lethals, right? Because there was that kill rig on this list for the last cannon effectiveness, for the auto hitting in that case, the Beast Naga boys. So there's a bunch of different outcomes, uh, factors that that actually comes into play, like with Jokari, where you can pop the transports in that case. Um, but all in all, you know, there's still weaknesses to this. I just love that he was able to offset it with a lot of these different units. He has four of the 20 man units of boys, two trucks for his SWAT teams. We know how valuable SWAT teams are. Been around since the index, but he also stuck the battle wagon in there. He's doing that because since the boys can't simply walk into the mid presence with sheer volume of boys and the durability from the rerolling ones and having five of Benville the entire time and having pain boys stacked in there, he's like, I have to pay for the wagon so I can stage up into the middle. A kill rig pushes a, a flank, gives some boy units plus one strength. They're re-rolling wounds. It pushes them into different strength. Uh, wounding bracket makes a huge difference. If they get lethal, it's even better. Um, then you have, of course, flash kits and knobs to actually punch out those problematic surgically striking and counter punching these units that are dwindling your boys as your boys are scoring your points. So shout out to my boy, Courtney Rhodes. Great job with that list. A lot of different stuff that we like to talk about on the channel that are found here. Uh, he's, you can see this is just a knowledge base, a good consensus of good ideas that are found in a lot of different arch archetypes. Uh, we've seen this in like a war horde. You've seen very similar things, but now so many boys I'm talking about with his support roles, right? With the SWAT team, with the wagon, with the kill rig. You've seen that a lot in war horde. He took that, that fundamental support, um, you know, and he decided to stick that behind the green tide and he made it work. That's what really caught my appeal with this list because it showed that he had a really good fundamental ordering like standing of what the orcs typically do what units are playing more of a support role right now to make the difference in these fights and he added that and that was fantastic so shout out to corny Rhodes. if you enjoyed the clip check out the full video here if you'd like to see more tactics click here let's get stuck in lads